Today I'm going to tell the story of Adventure Riding's great underdog, the Suzuki V-Strom. The V-Strom is like vanilla ice cream. It kind of works for everything, but no one is really taking Instagram selfies with it. The power? It's okay. The handling? It's okay. At least on the street anyway. The looks? Well, you can be the judge of that. Today I'm going to tell you the story of the V-Strom, as someone who has owned and loved one, despite its shortcomings. We'll talk about how it came to be, who it is designed for, its capabilities, and also what you should know if you're shopping for one. And this is five years old already. It's got 60,000 kilometers, not 16, 60,000 kilometers. No corrosion, nowhere. Just a small corrosion front here. Just a small one and a little bit uh, stupid here inside. Nothing else. No corrosion, nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. The bloody Japanese they make a, 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 a nice, a good manufactured motorcycle. So let's go back in time to 2002. The Winter Olympics were in Salt Lake City in the USA, Kmart filed for bankruptcy protection, and the US faced the aftermath of 9-11. In the motorcycle world, Suzuki had an idea. Why don't we build a practical, comfortable, and very ugly motorcycle based off the 1037cc liquid-cooled 90-degree V-twin engine we already have? Let's come up with a very confusing name. Also, please give the bike huge headlights. Little did they know they had given birth to what would become a household name in the motorcycle world. While Suzuki called it a sport enduro tour, loyal owners would come up with their own ways to categorize this machine over the years. Riders loved the new machine, citing a winning combination of a powerful and exciting engine combined with comfortable ergonomics and everyday utility. It was the upright VFR people had been wanting. It even won Rider Magazine Bike of the Year in 2002. In 2002, adventure riding had not become the bandwagon it is today. Still, keen-eyed riders noticed that the low-hanging engine, oil filter and exhaust, limited suspension travel, and vulnerable bodywork. A GS replacement this was not, more of a street-oriented alternative, and one that would probably run forever on discount brand 87 octane and Walmart oil, never having to return to the dealer for repairs. Many of my riding buddies at the time bought early model V-Stroms. They were used for everything from commuting to work, to hitting twisties on the weekend, to touring across the country. Only when riders tried to take them into rough terrain were there any major issues. Just like you can take your Subaru Outback off-road, so can you take a Suzuki V-Strom. It's not the worst tool for the job, but it's also not the best. The V-Strom is limited in its rock crawling, sand concrete, and mud wrangling ability by limited ground clearance and suspension travel, twitchy steering that washes out at the first sign of sand, and cast wheels. That being said, many have used their Stroms for adventure riding, including myself. Although with bikes like KTM's 950 Adventure coming out around the same time, off-road oriented riders had better choices, although oftentimes for more money. Fast forward to 2004 in the Suzuki corporate offices. Why don't we take the same motorcycle we just ride out two years ago and put in a smaller engine? We have a peach of a 650 90 degree V-twin already, so don't fix the looks and don't you dare change the name. The V-Strom 650, despite being a very similar motorcycle to its larger brother, rode very differently, and riders like myself, after riding both back to back, were convinced that this was a case of less is more. With a smaller engine, the bike felt more balanced. Being 38 pounds less than the 1000 helped too. Now, the chassis, brakes, and suspension were more closely matched to the engine's capabilities. The motor was smoother, got better fuel mileage, and made the bike more nimble due to less rotating mass. I was so impressed that I actually bought one. I enjoyed my black 2004 model immensely, proclaiming it the most comfortable motorcycle and practical bike I'd ever ridden. And even to this day, I still hold that to be true. I made extensive changes to mine and it delivered tens of thousands of miles of drama-free motoring. As long as I stayed away from anything with sand, mud, or rocks, it was fine. I used my KLR 650 and KTM 950 for those types of rides. There was, and still is, a lot to love about the V-Strom. 
an incredibly smooth gear shifter, a huge luggage rack to bolt up a milk crate or two, great headlights, a smooth engine that made a great sound with an aftermarket exhaust. It was, and still is, a bike for all reasons and all seasons. Downsides, yes. Besides the limited off-road chops, it suffered from wind buffeting, weak brakes by today's standards, and rather squishy suspension. However, this was all easily remedied in the aftermarket. Suzuki did make changes over the years. They actually discontinued the 1000 in 2007, while the 650 soldiered on, receiving some later updates including ABS brakes, a pretty thorough rework in 2012 including the revised engine, new styling, and a host of other small changes. Suzuki brought back the 1000 in 2014, carrying over the same basic engine design as the old bike, but with the rest of the bike being all new. It was still ugly and it still wasn't the best off-road, but it was also still practical, safe, fun on the road, affordable, and reliable. At some point, Suzuki introduced the XT models in a clear attempt to chase the adventure craze that were taking off like wildfire. Spoke wheels, skid plates, luggage, they looked the part, but they had the same limitations as before and just could not stack up to more off-road worthy competitors like the F800GS, Triumph Tiger 800XC, R1200GS, KTM 990, etc. For those looking to buy a used V-Strom, there are a few things to consider. First, should you get a 650 or a 1000? I did mention the 650 is better balanced, lighter, and generally preferred by many riders. However, the new 1000 that came out in 2014 was vastly improved over the older 1000s. The 1000 provides a different riding experience. The engine is more brawny, more muscular, with more torque, and gives you more of a shove in the pants. The 650 is smoother and just feels better balanced overall, at least to me. There are a few things to note on the V-Strom. Air filter service requires removal of the fuel tank, which was a bad design. On the older 1000s, fueling was an issue, as well as clutch baskets. Wind buffeting is an issue for most riders, which can be solved with a variety of aftermarket windshields and brackets. The windshield was adjustable starting in 2004, but buffeting was still an issue. Spark plugs and valves can take a bit of work to get to, so you should check if the previous owner had those done recently. Essentially though, this is one of the most bulletproof bikes out there. Oh, do watch for dented exhaust or undercarriage parts. As I mentioned, these bikes lack ground clearance. If you're looking at used V-Strom 650s, take note of the changes made in 2012. You might want to find a 2012 or later. Lower miles are always better, even with the known reliability of the Strom. Also, you can get older models without ABS if you dislike ABS for some reason. If you're looking at new V-Stroms, there is a lot of amazing competition in the adventure market right now, so make sure to cross-compare with bikes in the same price range. Overall, the Stroms are a more road-oriented choice for riders who focus more on value and longevity. Fast forward to today, and we have redesigned V-Stroms yet again. Soldiering on with the same basic engines from the 1800s, oh I'm sorry, 1990s, and carrying the same limitations that make them suited more to on-road duty than off-road duty, Suzuki somehow one-upped even themselves and somehow made the bike even more uglier than it was before. Of course, styling is subjective, but look at it, could anyone love this face? You can't blame Suzuki for carrying on with the same basic bike for almost 20 years. It works for so many riders who don't need to pretend to be a rally racer, who just want a practical and comfortable motorcycle that never breaks. And it works for Suzuki, who covered a lot of the tooling costs decades ago. After all, we know Suzuki, and Kawasaki for that matter, don't really understand or cater to the off-road side of the adventure market, while Honda and Yamaha clearly have serious offerings there. And that's fine. There's always been a place for the Strom, and there always will be. By the way, the V stands for V-Twin, and Strom is German for wind. So, enjoy your V-Wind, Strom Troopers. Until next time, ride safe, see you on the next video. Remember to like and subscribe, and happy trails. That's why I'm telling you that this bike is maybe one of the best bikes ever, even if I don't like it the manufacturer quality. Take a look. And this small corrosion front here. Just a small one and a little bit uh, stupid here inside. Nothing else. No corrosion. Nothing.
nothing, 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 nothing. The bloody Japanese, they make a, 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 a nice, a good manufactured motorcycle. Nothing. This is bike. Nothing. This is bike.